This video is especially made for you with you in mind. I have a subscriber who is in need of a quicker style due to some personal circumstances and I appreciate her putting me in position to think more on what I could provide as far as a tutorial to meet that need. So this is a wig tutorial on how to make a pronto wig which is another version of a quick weave wig. This is going to be with me using um, a plastic cap as a liner so the glue doesn't touch the hair of the mannequin and this is my wig cap. This is the front of the wig cap. And placing the wig cap on the mannequin head making sure it's as secure as possible and um, centered <clears throat> and also covering the plastic bag. I did use a relatively thick plastic bag so it's easier to peel out of the cap once we're finished because we will be using bonding glue and this is what makes it a quick weave wig. So I'm just circling the mannequin head around for you to see how the wig cap looks while placed over the mannequin head. The, this mannequin head I was using to emulate a client's head of hair being braided or flat twisted down. I use flat twist. So the extensions I'm using in the video today are human Mongolian kinky curly extensions and this is the bonding glue, 30 second bonding glue but um, you can use what's most accessible to you in your local beauty supply. So we're getting started with measuring the track at the nape of the neck of the cap just above the band in, on the back of the cap. And once that's measured and cut off, I go on and grab the glue and begin to paste the glue on the weft of the track. Now when applying the glue, you want to be as light handed as possible because you want to thin as a layer of glue on the weft as possible so it's not too thick of an um, area of glue and it will take longer to dry and possibly not adhere to the cap as well. So you want as thin as a possible layer of glue. So I'm going in and centering that track along the nape of the neck and meshing it down pressing it into the cap uh, massaging and basically rubbing the weft line where the glue was placed to make sure it is firmly pressed to the cap and this is a relatively redundant process take the track and measure it in the back just like with the crochet braid or braid extensions you don't want the tracks too close together in the back because for one thing it would make you run out of extension hair faster and two you will have too bulky hair in the back and not as much fullness or volume in the top and sides so once you've measured this next track you do the same step you go in Get your glue apply, flip it over carefully so you don't touch the weft where the glue is and possibly smudge it, making it not um, fastened to the cap as well. And um, once you get it um, centered, you massage the that track onto the cap until you're satisfied. I don't have a blow dryer with me, but actually having a blow dryer is, is helpful with helping to speed up the process of the tracks drying as well. So that's one tidbit for you. You don't need it. It could be useful. Just depends on how much of a rush you're in. Um, if you don't have it, don't worry. It's not necessary. I'm not using one here in the video. So again, going in with the next track and applying that glue. Now, I think that um, most mannequin heads when you purchase them online or at your local beauty supply will come with a tabletop um, mannequin stand, which is, is kind of effective um, if you have a good table in which you could secure to. 
but I have a tripod and I find that I work more efficiently while standing and you can stand up and work with a tabletop mannequin but I think I personally have found better um, results with uh, my tripod stand so some beauty supplies are getting pr kind of um, um, useful with some of the materials they offer um, for you to do it, a lot of do-it-yourself projects so I have that third track laid and you see that there's at least an inch in between those tracks and um, about a, probably an inch to an inch and a half and I'm still going in and measuring I put the glue on this fourth track and pretty much rinse and repeat you you know just going in laying it down making sure it's pretty even and lined up to the position I wanted to lay and placing the end down massaging it in on both on both ends and I'm gonna spin it for you so you can kind of see placements this one would be relatively right above the person's ear and um, kind of starting that curve because this is going to lead us up to the circle we're going to be making for our closure which I'm going to show you up close and personal um, as we get to that point later in the video how to do a closure for your full quick weave wig so that was both sides of this um, track application and so we've come to the top um, and I'm in the front and I'm beginning because those other tracks that I've put in have kind of helped to form more of a circular pattern and this initial track that I'm putting along the front is going to complete the circle so that we can kind of move forward and close the circle so we can get to the actual closure now um, as you can see um, I didn't initially place this track down I like to give you as much reality as possible because you know sometimes you don't you put the glue on the weft and you know you may be moving a little bit too fast or your hands may be a little bit outside of ashy like mine they may be a little bit jittery and you didn't place them specifically where you wanted to place it so you just put a little bit more glue on that weft and it may look like I'm applying a lot my nozzle is just a little bit clogged because I don't know if you've ever worked with binding glue that nozzle gets a little clogged and uh, some of the glue actually dries at the nozzle so you will sometimes intermittently be pulling that off but either way this is just me showing you in real time during the process of me making this vi this unit and this video me having to readjust a track that I had to lay so that was the one track across the front and now the circle has been closed and formed and now we're going to be working towards closing up that big circle so we can get to our closure and here I readjusted the the angle for you and I'm showing you splitting a track splitting a track is useful when you don't have enough bundles like myself I only had two bundles and uh, it also helps you to have a lighter fluffier wig now um, if you don't have enough if you don't want to go through with splitting the track you can still make a full wig with three bundles um, and it won't be super heavy I just have two bundles so I made it work with what I had by splitting the tracks so um, splitting the tracks allows you to put tracks closer together and again this will also um, without you running out of hair quicker and also it just leaves you with a much lighter feeling and um, looking wig but you still can have the fullness because it's technically the same amount of hair. You just can double up your your out your layout. And so this this first track within the circle is from me going along the front and kind of like halfway going around and um, 
replacing that. I'm similar to a quick weave or a 27 piece. You kind of like uh, strategically place the tracks once you measure them. Like you don't just kind of like do a basic, you know, circle, circle, circle. Um, I know it's, it's kind of like difficult to explain if you don't have experience with quick weaves and 27 pieces. But in a general sense, what I mean is... Um, taking each track measuring it out and placing them in specific places I'm not just doing big circles around until the circle closes in smaller because it will allow me to have the coverage on like the sides and the front that I'm looking for um, without it being too much space in between each track and doing big circles is difficult to control how close together the tracks are without having maybe three or four bundles to do that so this was more efficient so placing that next track around and as you can see it's gradually getting smaller and this next track putting glue on it and again you may want to have two of those glue bottles because you know sometimes it may be getting frustrated working with the nozzle getting so clogged up <clears throat> so um, again going halfway about a halfway point and kind of circling that track around the front and placing the end on the opposite side about halfway and just smoothing that area down all the way around just to make sure it's fully secured to the net or the cap rather and just to do a little extra checking I smooth everything around again these checks are a little bit shorter and once I finish putting the glue on this one, you're going to see that um, using this particular one around the side, one side, and it's kind of like actually from the back. It's going from the middle of each, basically ear to ear around the back to close in this circle. The closing in the circle is kind of like, it seems slow, but actually moves fast. It's, I was just trying to be as detail oriented in this video for you as possible. And I'm um, smoothing that in and um, going in with a smaller track. And this is when I start to use a bit smaller pieces. So each side, I'm taking a track about this size to put on just to just to kind of continue to close up that close up that circle and I place it on this left side here and kind of circle it around your overall objective is to maintain the circle because it's going to be easier for you when you get to the actual closure, you won't be trying to manipulate the tracks to fill in too, too, you know, oblong of a space. Like you want to keep it pretty circular as much as you can. So I think that's what's helpful for me too with not having as many bundles with splitting the tracks. It helps me put them closer together so I can control the shape of things. You can control the shape of things with more, with um, without splitting the tracks is this you're gonna run out of hair faster and because I don't have as much hair to um, work with on this wig I made do with what I had so placing another track on that side we're getting there slowly but surely and um, pressing that in you want to be pretty firm when you're pressing these tracks in to make sure they're secure as possible. So we're getting so much closer into the, the, 
the part of the video that is most awaited <laughs> which is doing the closure and actually my initial video of me doing the closure actually cut off because my camera froze for some reason and I couldn't stop the video to like it was just some issue technical issues with my camera so I ended up having to redo that portion of the video for you but it worked out because I got a better angle and all of that so as we're working towards this getting smaller is I'm not cutting anything I'm literally just um, gonna be winding it around like you see I placed the end of it down and I actually have glue on it already before I apply that end piece and I'm kind As of we see the whole pressing it smaller, around the circle, working towards my last track. And right here, as I'm and which we're pressing use that for the track around the circle, I am um, moving any extra hairs or flyaways out of the way, and um, you know, trying to make sure it's controlled as possible. And with each turn, I'm putting a little bit more glue. Um, so that as I'm working, I can continue to um, close in the circle. So now we've come to the part of the closure. And you see there's a tiny hole right there. And so with this last end piece right here, I'm applying glue to it. Now your hands will get a little bit of glue on it, but it's okay because the glue actually removes very easily. And so once you apply the glue to that area, you want to make start rolling you see here it's not that much glue on it but um, you are going to take that end and you're gonna start to roll it into itself like a mini pinwheel for like a better reference and you're gonna be kind of to control it kind of patting it in making sure it stays a uniform circle or swirl and um, yes, press it in as you're twisting it down, making it a bigger pinwheel. And as you get to the end of the track or where the track is attached to the head, the, the hair, the head, the wig cap, you um, put, completed the pinwheel. And then to secure the closure to the wig cap, you put a glob of glue, not very much, I know this looks like a lot, but it's not very much, at the center of it all and place that right in that tiny circle and press, 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 I cannot stress press. <laughs> you want to press that in and then voila, you have a fully completed closure on your full afro wig. Pronto quick weave wig and as you can see no tracks are visible it's comparable to closures that you can buy but the benefit of knowing how to make your own closure is you know how to make it and also it's just personally f um, flatter and not as bulky as store-bought closures so now I'm going in to shape up the wig with kind of like a chunky cut just to give it um, a natural look um, so it kind of like shapes the face I switched the mannequin head um, back to the one that I initially showed at the beginning of the video just because this is uh, it helps the hair actually be more visible to you um, the viewer so with me going through and shaping up this mannequin head I mean this wig is um, we're getting closer to the finished look and I think she's looking nice I actually think I want to do a giveaway on this what do you think let me know in the comments here it is all cut and showing you the top very natural looking and thank you so much for watching don't forget to call or text me to book 303-444-5444